Welcome to my knitting podcast. This is episode number two. My name is Jingyi. Um, you can find me on Ravelry as Knitting Jingyi and on Instagram as Knit by Jingyi. Um, I just got back home from a camping trip this weekend. This is um, right now. I'm currently recording it on uh, Sunday afternoon. Um, the sun is almost going down. It's uh, 5 p.m. right now, so I'm trying to speed up through this episode so that the lighting won't change much um, throughout this episode. Uh, but if it does change a little bit, I hope that you can forgive me. I'm still a pretty uh, newbie YouTuber here. Um, after I uploaded my first episode, I got so many lovely um, comments and I got so many viewers um, for my first episode. There are many people welcoming me to the knitting podcast community um, and many people giving me advice on um, how to knit. So that's really lovely and I can't tell you how grateful I am um, receiving all this love from you guys. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it just gave me a lot of joy uh, throughout the days to look at your comments. Um, and I am appreciating everyone um, who click into my video, subscribe, um, like this video, or even leave some comment down below. Um, I'm really grateful for that. Um, and uh, oh, I did notice that I didn't even properly introduce myself um, in the last knitting podcast. I just set my name and speed through the video, just jump through the uh, knitting content very quickly. Um, so I think I will do a proper intro of myself this time. Um, but um, anyways, my name is Jing Yi, and I was born and raised in China. My hometown is called Wuxi. It's a small town, it's a small city near Shanghai, but it's a very lovely city. I miss my hometown so much. Um, I will be back to my hometown uh, visiting temporarily for a month in December. Um, and if I got a chance, I will record a few clips and uh, insert them into my knitting podcast then. Um, yeah, what else? Um, yeah, I've been in, um, I've like, I came to the US for college when I was 18 and I've stayed here since then. Um, right now I am a software engineer. It's my full-time job in a tech industry. So, um, uh, in terms of in terms of knitting, um, I started some crochet uh, during pandemic. I think I've always been a very uh, crafty person growing up. Um, I'm trying always trying to do some DIY stuff. Uh, did some cross stitch when I was a kid. So during COVID lockdown, uh, I was just bored and I pick up crochet. I taught myself crocheting through some uh, videos. And I started to making some stuffed animals, um, but I quickly realized that crocheting isn't for me because I wanted to um, actually make some garments. Uh, like I know you can crochet some garments, but I really like the knit and pro stitches. Um, I learned how to cast on and how to do knit and pro uh, when I was a kid. Uh, my grandma told me how to do that, but I was too young at that time and I don't know what I was doing, but um, those memories clicked back to me um, during COVID time. So I started knitting. Um, I never knit any actual things before that. And um, I followed a Korean YouTube tutorial um, on YouTube to how to knit a vest. And that was my first finished garment. Um, it was a, it was very interesting to think about that because I know other people started to knit or learn to knit by um, knitting some squares or knit some um, like smaller things. But I followed a Korean tutorial. While I don't understand anything she said, I don't speak Korean at all. Um, I just. Um, look at what she does on the video and mimic what she's doing with my hands. And 
the, the vest turned out to be fine. There are many mistakes on the vest, but I still wear it a lot. Um, and it fits me great. So I was a little surprised because I didn't do any gauge swatch and I know nothing about yarn weight at that time. So that was how I started knitting and I've been knitting for three years, um, starting from that first vest. And I've been enjoying my knitting journey for the whole three years. So I won't call myself as a very expert knitter or anything. Uh, it's just how I like to spend my free time. Um, yeah, and there are still many things, new things in the knitting community that I want to explore. Um, I want to do more com uh, complex color work and I want to do test knitting. There are so many great yarns I haven't tried, so it's still a very exciting new field for me. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much about me. So if you are curious about anything else about me, you can comment down below. But I'm sure you're here for the knitting content. So I will start first with what I'm wearing. Um, this is um, a vest and it's the second vest that I knit besides the very first of my garment. Um, and I'm checking my notes down here. Uh, it's the Friday Slipover V-neck version by Petit Knit. It's a broken rib uh, stitch pattern and it was my first time knitting broken rib. I really like this kind of stitch because um, it kind of um, hides all my mistakes. Um, well, there's not, no, not much mistakes, but I feel like it can make your knit stitches look very even. Um, and. Uh, I use the yarn, let me see. I knit a size small. The yarn that I use is Seneskar Sunday. Um, the colorway is 1015. It's a slightly gray toned uh, beige color. It's not a white. I also paired with Seneskar Tin Silk Mohair. Um, in a very gray color. The colorway is 1022. So you can see there is a slight color difference between the color and the rest of the body. Um, and, also, and also here on the uh, sleeve, how do you call it? The, the ribbing part of the sleeve. Um, I think it's, uh, it's there in the pattern, like the sample photo is like this, like the body, the body is gray and the ribbing part is all in white. Um, I, I, I simply use a uh, white mohair um, for the ribbing part and uh, I use the same Sandiscar Sunday base with the white mohair um, to achieve this slightly whiter result. Um, I think the my contrast is uh, very subtle compared with uh, Patinit's uh, sample photo, but I really like um, the subtle difference. Um, it looks like a gray vest from apart, but when I get close, you can tell there is a slight difference. Um, I really like design detail like this. And uh, I don't remember the um, white mohair I use. I think it's some leftover mohair that I have, so I didn't purchase another Sennis Guaranteed Duke mohair for that. Um, yeah, and uh, for the pattern, um, I really like the pattern, like all the other patina pattern, it's very clear. Um, I don't remember if I did any modification to this pattern. Maybe the slip hem, I will show you. I'm not sure if you can see it. Um, I'm not sure if the split hem is there in the pattern, but um, if there is not, I will definitely modify it my own because um, I really like the split hem because I can fit any type of garment underneath. Um, so that's really convenient. I don't like the tight feeling of a rounded ribbing um, at the bottom. Yeah. So that's that about this uh, Friday slipover. Uh, it's actually pretty warm here. I'm already um, getting sweaty by wearing this, so I might take it off. Um, I'm just wearing it for to to show it to you guys, but I might take it off if I get too hot. Yeah. So 
I'm checking my notes again. Uh, yeah, I think we can go to the first finish object. This is my first finish object. Uh, it's called uh, Main Woods Hat. And the uh, designer is Laura Ringbach or Ringbach. Um, probably I'm pronouncing that wrong. Please forgive me. English is not my mother tongue. Um, yeah, anyways, this hat, um, I just finished it this week and was blocking it on the way to my camping trip. I was putting it um, on, the, on the windshield and uh, get more sunlight for this. And right now it's fully blocked. It took s several days to block, maybe because the wool is very thick and uh, you get like double, kind of a double layer wool um, in the color work section. So this is a Fair Isle style color work hat. And uh, you start from the bottom. The pattern allows you to do either a regular, sing like a single layer uh, brim or like a fold over brim um, but I knit this for my boyfriend and uh, the last hat that I knit him he always have trouble with the fold over brim sometimes he fold too much and sometimes he didn't fold it at all so this time I just um, do it double double folded or double knitted brim uh, basically I knit twice of the length of the brim and then I fold it fold it down and stitch it together into it and then continue the knitting um, to the top. Um, yeah, and I think I really like how it turned out. Um, and like it, you won't get into any trouble uh, figuring out how much you should uh, fold for the brim. Um, it, were, it looks very neat actually. Um, and for the color work, it's not my first time doing color work. I think I also knit up some color work hat for my grandmoms um, and they all really like it. And, but I think I did a better job this time. Um, I try to keep all, the, all my floats really, really loose. Um, and uh, if it's not tight at all and it fits him great. And uh, for the top part, you just do some decreases on the top. Um, I won't put it on because um, it's kind of large on me, but it fits my boyfriend really well. Um, who else? Oh, and I knit a size large. I think there are three sizes available for this pattern. The smallest size, um, it says will fit a children. Um, I'm not sure if it's a baby or it's a, like an older kid, uh, but I knit the size large, it's for a um, large adult and it fit my boyfriend. The yarn that I use is Patton's Classic Wool Worsted. Um, I use the same yarn for knitting um, the previous color work hat for my grandmoms. I really like this yarn, I think it's a great fit for any color work hats or any color work. Um, I don't remember the color name but this is a gray and the top is a white. <laughs> I don't remember the numbers or the names, sorry. But I pick up those yarns from Michael's. Um, at that time, I think I was looking for some 100% wool um, worsted yarns and uh, the patterns was the only one that's available because Michael's mostly have more um, acrylic yarns. Uh, but I'm really happy with this find. It's not very expensive and I, I was able to knit three hats in total, including this one, using this white and the gray. Um, yeah, and I still have some leftovers. Maybe I can knit someone else a color work um, hat, but that's it. Um, it's, I really, I'm really proud of myself able to finish this. Oh, and I forgot to say that this is actually a lingering piece from this spring, I would say. And uh, I started to knit on uh, the bottom part and the weather started to get uh, warmer and warmer and I lost the motivation to finish it because even though I finish it, 
um, it started to become summer and my boyfriend won't wear it at all. So I just left there uh, in my project basket and, uh, and I pick it up recently because there are, are a lot of three millimeter needle projects <laughs> recently. I just want to be nice to my hands and started to work on this worsted hat. It knits up really, really quickly. Um, I think I only knit it during my commute. I have a long commute, to be honest. Um, it took about maybe three hours round trip, so I can get a lot of knitting done if I am not that sleepy in the morning. So um, it took about three or four days to finish the top part. Um, it's, it's just really fast. Um, and uh, the color work is really addictive. Um, it's very easy to follow even even you are knitting in the car. Uh, each round has a different repeat, but you're only knitting with two colors and um, the repeat is very easy to remember. I only need to look at the chart once per round. Um, and uh, yeah, it just finished up very quickly. I will probably knit more of this hat because I really, really like it. I'll probably knit one for myself one day. Yeah, so that's the main woods hat. So this is the second finished object. It's the I Love Stripes uh, bandana. It's uh, designed by Susan Muller and I knit the largest size. There are two sizes available, uh, small and medium. I knit the size large, oh no, the larger size, the size medium actually. Um, and uh, it turns out to be very small. It's much smaller than the pattern uh, says. The pattern says you will finish up with the length of 98 centimeters. Uh, but before blocking, mine was only 60 centimeters and uh, I was stretching it, stretching it so much. Um, right now I think it's about 80, 82 centimeters. It's still quite small. Um, it's even smaller than the uh, size small specified in the pattern. Um, maybe I will need to block it one more time to stretch it. Um, but I really like it, how it turned out and I really like the knitting process. Um, the yarn that I use is uh, Quivic. Uh, it's Quivic by Windy Valley Mask Ox. So this yarn is the yarn that I got from my trip to Banff National Park. Um, I, the yarn is really special because of the Quivic fiber. It has 15% of the Quivic and uh, it's from the very fine coat of musk ox. And musk ox is a mammal living in the Arctic Circle. And uh, Quivic, um, according to the brand, it's more luxurious, more, uh, it, it will hold more warmth and much lighter than uh, cashmere. So yeah, it's a very special yarn. And uh, when knitting up this piece, I would feel what the brand says was kind of true. Um, because the yarn is really, is really, really soft. It's the softest thing that I've ever touched, I would say. Um, and when knitting it up and holding it like this, um, sometimes I have to like look down and check if the fabric actually melted in my hand because it just feels like butter soft, like room temperature butter, that kind of softness. and. Um, it's not scratchy on your neck at all. So I definitely recommend this yarn if you want to knit some small scarves or knit for someone who has a sensitive skin. And uh, the color way, um, so there are two colors. Um, the base color is the natural color and this kind of brick orange tone color uh, is called apron strings. Um, and I really like how they combined together. Um, the, the sample picture is a black, black and white construction um, and the pattern calls for, I think, pure silk um, by Knitting for Olive, but I don't have access to that yarn. 
Um, I think this yarn substitution works really well. Um, this scarf will uh, be a more like winter piece and will be more warm um, than the pattern suggested. Um, oh, and uh, for um, and for the pattern, um, I think it knit up also very quickly, uh, especially when you first started. Um, I almost can do maybe three stripes per day after work. Um, and uh, when you um, when you increase and get to um, like get down, um, the there are more stitches on your needles and it definitely took longer, but still it's a very small piece. And after finishing knitting the stripes, uh, you just finish it finish up with knitting the I cord uh, bind off and I cord edges. Um, I have a feeling that maybe I did the I cord edges a little bit too tight. That's why I couldn't stretch it too much. Even though I feel there are still like you can see that the um, stock net part has a lot more stretch to it. But um, the I-core bind off is really at its <laughs> maximum. So anyways, this finished object is still a little bit smaller than I thought. Um, I can wear it as a little scarf, but um, the knot will be a little bit too tight. Um, so I will definitely wet block it again. If it doesn't work out, I might have to get rid of the I-core binding and do the do the web block without the I-core edges um, and then after blocking it to the correct size finish up with the I-core binding again but that's a lot of work to do um, but for this special yarn I really want to make this a almost perfect piece oh and this is a gift knit um, I'm, I will give this to my mom when I'm back to China, um, if she doesn't like the color, um, I will keep it to myself. But I really hope she will like it. Yeah, this is the um, little scarf. Did I cover everything? Yes. And the last finished object is a sock, a pair of socks I knit for my boyfriend. I'm not sure if this is in the state that's presentable because he already wore it after I finish it. Um, this is just a plain stock knit uh, vanilla sock. I followed, um, I followed the pattern by Crazy Socks Lady. Um, I knit this on the uh, nine inch circular needles and the yarn I use uh, is the crowning yarn fingering. By circus, by circus tonic handmade. It's a sock yarn with 15% of yarn, and uh, it's really fluffy. And uh, I hope this is not <laughs> too gross to show you guys. Oh, this this side is better. Um, this is a hand dye yarn, um, and there are very beautiful, um, very subtle changes um, with the blues and uh, it's really fun to work on this yarn. Um, and again, this is my, <clears throat> this is another commute knit because I like knitting small things in the car. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I just realized my camera died down. Like for some reason it only records 30 minutes of the video. Um, and uh, apparently I was, uh, rambling too much and I didn't realize 30 minutes is up uh, but we were just talking about these socks right oh and I took off the vest because it's way too warm um, um, and I was just saying that I really like knitting socks in the car uh, but one um, drawback for me is that um, I prefer to use the 9 inch circular uh, needles for knitting socks uh, but when you come to the gusset or the toe, you have to switch to either um, magic loop or using the double pointed needles. Um, I don't have a 
double pointed needle. No, I don't have a I don't have a long enough cord or long enough needle for the magic loop for my socks yet. Um, so I've always been using double pointed needles. Uh, but once I hurt myself by the double pointed needles in the car, because my needles are very long and they are um, metal needles. So I hurt myself by piercing through the skin of my palm and it was bleeding so much I got really terrified that time. So I stopped using any uh, double pointed needles in the car. Um, so when I reach to the point in the stock, I need to um, do the gusset or the toe. I will just put it down and bring it back home, to, uh, finishing it at home um, and then continue the stock net when I'm in the car. So that kind of slows down or uh, stops the knitting flow in the car. Um, I'm trying to improve this part. Maybe I will try the uh, magic loop method. Um, but my concern is that I don't, I don't really do much uh, magic loop because um, I feel like it's always taking more time to uh, move your stitches to the other side of the needle and you have to do that for every round. And I also am worried I will leave some holes or the stitches will be uneven um, if, I move the, if I have to move the stitches around and around. <laughs> So that's my concerns, but please let me know how you prefer to knit your socks. Um, and hopefully I can get some inspirations from that. Um, yeah, so that's all of my three finished objects. We can go into the working progress right now. Um, so just speaking of socks, um, my next working progress is another car knitting or community. I am knitting a pair of socks for my grandpa. Let me get it. So I just started knitting this sock. Um, so I'm again using the um, hand dye yarn by, sorry, it's a really long yarn. <laughs> um, so I'm again using the crowning, crowning yak fingering by Circus Tonic Handmade um, using that blue hand dye yarn um, for this pair of socks. Um, but this time I don't want to do like all of my socks the same way. So this time I'm using some contrasting colors for the heel and probably for the toe as well. Um, it's some, it, the gray yarn is some scrappy sock yarn. Um, I just happen to have in my stash and it pairs with um, one of the gray tone. Uh, one of the green tone in the hand dye yarn. So I think it's a, it's a perfect match. Um, and um, I really like to knit socks um, and uh, I want to knit socks for my grandpa because um, I already gifted him one sock, uh, one pair of socks last year. And he took such a great care of it. I'm not sure if my grandparents are watching Probably not because they are, they don't speak English. Um, but I I really I am moved by the way he cared for my hand knitted socks. Um, he my grandma told me that he only wore my socks when he's asleep. Um, so he won't um, wear my socks wearing his socks <laughs> that I knit for him. He won't wear his socks um, when he's walking around. Um, he only wore it in the bed. Um, and uh, for a year that he wore it, my grandma told me that he's only uh, like washing that, that sock for one time. <laughs> so that's, that's pretty amazing because he, he's just not trying to ruin the socks that I knit. And the, um, apparently he knows how much effort goes into um, hand knitted socks because when I'm when I told him that I'm going to knit him another pair, he says, oh, just focus on your work or do whatever you wanted to do. Just don't knit me anything. I'm already good enough with that pair of socks. But um, it just um, moved me a lot. I really want to knit stuff for people who cares um, for my work. Uh, and because my grandparents are in China, they don't see me very often. 
I, we haven't seen each other for three years. That's crazy. So I want to um, give them something that's handmade by me um, so they can think about me when they put them on. So that's that. I Hopefully I can finish it before December and it will be a brand new pair of winter socks that keeps my grandpa's feet very warm during the winter. Yeah, so that's one of the working progress. Um, I don't have any pretty um, project bags. I just keep them in a ziplock. That's a shame. I should have made myself or um, purchased more uh, smaller project bags. But right now this just works well for me. Um, yeah, and the next, the next thing you already see it maybe if you watch my last episode this is uh this is friday tea by patinet um so the vest that i just wore um, is friday vest and this is friday tea um, again this is a um, in broken rib this is a top down um, short sleeve uh, raglan short sleeve um, and you knit in the round um, I think last time I show you guys, I haven't split for the sleeves yet, um, but this time I already finished both of the sleeves. <laughs> um, um, I know like it's not looking very long. I thought I can finish it in a month, but um, knitting in three millimeter needles is very slow. It's very, very slow. Like. Um, it's like um, the I love stripes bandana and the socks that I was knitting are all using fingering weight and the bandana was also on three millimeter needles the socks are even smaller so everything was very small um, I have to pick up the worsted weight hat so that my hands could get some rest um, but anyways um, that's the justification I got for myself for um, not finishing up this t-shirt I hope I can finish it very soon because the weather is getting a little bit cold. Um, I hope because um, it was cold a few days ago, but this week it was hot again. Um, it's a short sleeve, so hopefully I can finish it before the weather gets too cold. Um, yeah, I really like knitting the broken rib again because um, it makes the stitch looks very clear very even even though i know i am um, not very uh, neat in terms of knitting when it's all like purling or it's all stockinette my stitches won't be that pretty but um, broken rib helps me to hide everything hide all of my my mistakes um, and uh, i really like the neck uh, the neckband detail again. It's also a fold it down and you stitch it up uh, kind of neckband. Um, I tried it on once. Um, once I finished both of the sleeves, it fit me great. Like I think the sleeve will just hit this elbow. Um, I think I knit one more repeat of the stripe than the pattern um, because I counted how many stripes uh, the Patinitz version have. I think I have one more uh, stripe than her because um, I think both of us have um, extra small, extra small size. But if I didn't do the extra uh, stripe repeat, um, the sleeves would be like this, like this long. But I want it to be longer. I was actually thinking about making it a long sleeve and that's why I was trying to finish up both sleeves um, but I ended up not making it a long sleeve because I look at um, the Instagram and the Reverie page for people doing modification. Um, I don't really like the look of uh, a very tight sleeve um, and my yarn is a little bit scratchy. This is the Mondim yarn. It's a 100% Portuguese wool. So it's not that soft as um, the Merino wool would get. Um, so I was thinking maybe 
maybe not for the long sleeve and it was a lot of knitting for a long sleeve I'm already getting tired for knitting the short sleeve or the middle sleeve um, but um, what else oh maybe more for the yarn um, the yarn is molding yarn again the main color is the 100 undyed and the contrast color is 109 orchata um, it's a name of the beverage and I picking the yarn up by thinking it's the perfect color for uh, milk tea <laughs> um, I really like milk tea so this is this is my milk tea inspired stripes <laughs> um, yeah I think that's pretty much it for this Friday tea I um, really hope I can finish up soon oh and one more thing for the fit I hope I can get more organized in the future episode but I was just not that organized enough to talk about everything in place I always there are some ideas popping through all this there's one thing I forgot to mention um, but this is a pretty important I hope you um, can help me with is um, after I put it on I found there are a lot more fabric um, under the uh, on, under this part um, I actually pick up two more stitches than the pattern specified because I was thinking my yarn is scratchy I don't I don't want uh, the sleeve to be too close um, so I pick up two more stitches I'm not sure if that's the reason if the two stitches actually have such a great impact but um, it ended up with um, some more fabric um, starting from the underarm to the top um, as long as the back if you knit a Friday tee before please let me know if that was your experience um, so I, I'm not sure if the extra two stitches was the issue or the yarn that I use was more rigid or the fabric is harder than a merino wool fiber so that if you have some extra uh, fabric it just stand there um, I'm not too sure uh, but there was one comment uh, from the last episode telling me that I could use some um, hair conditioner to soften up the yarn I haven't tried that because I've never blocked the garments halfway I'm not sure if that will make any impact I'm scared of doing that um, but anyway I will definitely block it with um, like use my regular yarn soap and probably do a uh, wash before that using um, some hair conditioner and hopefully that will work hopefully that will solve the extra fabric issue and also soften up the yarn um, I tried it on it was not very scratchy uh, it's definitely more scratchy than uh, merino wool but I think I, I love wool I'm not a very sensitive skin person so it's it's okay on me and it's very warm I hope it will give me the enough warmth for wearing it in the autumn and in a in my office where the air condition is always very cold yeah and this is the yarn that I use it's the Mondim yarn people mostly use it for socks uh, and I feel like I will have extra yarn left and I'm even more happy because I can try this again uh, knitting up some socks seeing how the fabric stand yeah so that's the that's the second so that's the second working progress let me get more water my last working progress is the seasons cardigan oh, where is it my last working progress is my seasons cardigan um, I temporarily put it in this um, project bag I made for myself when I was in my crocheting um, era um, I kind of um, hand, hand drafted this pattern um, I did have some inspiration from the social media from Xiaohongshu a Chinese social media 
um, and uh, I got the pattern or like the stitch um, for for the flower motif um, from that uh, from one of the posts um, and the rest of it plus the drawstring there are some flowers here the rest are my um, my own design <laughs> I didn't do any design I just do whatever I wanted to do um, and uh, I really like it it took a very long time but um, I, I haven't used it for a while I just found it in one of my basket it was just lying up there needing more love so I'm trying to put more stuff in, in here and trying to use my um, handcrafted things more often um, yeah so sorry for the sound of the needle but there are There are a lot of needles on this project. Trying to find a way to hold it so the needles won't make any sound. Yeah, I think this will work. This is how much I have for the Seasons Cadigan. Uh, it's a design by Ozella. Um, it's her very first, no, probably not the very first, but very um, old design pattern. Um, she has more uh, cardigans pattern afterwards, but I believe this is her first uh, cardigan pattern. And there's also a oversized version for this. Um, and I just started. Um, you start from the neck band and uh, pick up stitches and doing the half fisherman broken rib or half fisherman stitch um, along the way. Um, a very interesting thing about this pattern that I didn't do before, I haven't done it before, is you knit the band, um, the button band, as you go along, as you knit the rest of the things. So I think it's really interesting. Um, you don't have the finishing step of picking up stitches and do the button band. But the um, Draw, drawback is that you will have, I will have many stitches right now because the needle size is different f uh, for the neck band than for um, the, the main part. Um, so I'm not sure if there's a way to avoid this. <laughs> it's a really weird looking. Um, and I don't want to, and I can't really knit this in the car because there are so many things going on and I don't, want to use the this uh, very hard double pointed needles but I got this double pointed needle from my grandma um, she have a set of them um, and they are in great shape I would say like they are great needles but just trying to use them with some uh, with some care uh, don't hurt yourself don't use it in the car definitely um, and uh, I will put them back because they are making a lot of noise. Um, for the cardigan, I am knitting size extra small. I'm using the stitch count for the extra small, but I want to achieve the measurement for size small. Um, it's because I was having so much trouble um, hitting the gauge. Let me see if I can find my swatch. Nope, I cannot find my swatches. I don't know where they are. <clears throat> but um, I was having so much trouble hitting the gauge. Um, I think the, let me see, I put some note. The pattern cost for uh, US size nine needles. Um, I tried to swatch with size nine needles, but my gauge is way off. Like. The stitch count, the pattern calls for 17 stitches by 30, 36 rows for a 10 centimeter um, swatch. But my swatch was 14 stitches by 32 rows. Um, so it was a bit too loose. Um, and then I sized down two needle size. I was using US size seven doing the swatch again um, in half fisherman yeah, half fisherman rib. Um, but again, my stitch count was 14 stitches 
after blocking of course for US 7. So my mind was blown, like how was that even possible? I was using USS 9 and USS 7, but achieving the same stitch count for 10 centimeters, the row was different. Um, US 7 needle requires more rows, it requires 40 rows to achieve, uh, to reach the 10 centimeter gauge. But how does it happen? Like why it's all 14 stitches? Um, I'm not sure if it's because the yarn, oh, I haven't mentioned the yarn. Um, I was using the custom woolen mills yarn. Uh, it's their uh, Mo Spinner 2 ply yarn. Uh, it's a worsted yarn. But I feel like this worsted is uh, maybe a bit too uh, heavy than a normal worsted. Uh, but the weight and yardage is the same as what the, it's almost the same as what, uh, what the pattern calls for. Um, it has um, 112 grams or 4 ounces and it gives you about 200 meters. I'm not sure why the gauge issue happened and I even put down how is it possible on my note. So it's a mystery for us, for, for me. Um, uh, my camera died down again. I thought, I thought I haven't reached. I, I thought I haven't reached the thirty-minute mark for my camera, but apparently there is not enough memory. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I was just saying. I thought one of the reasons for the gauge mystery is the the yarn that I use. Um, it was a bit more heavy than um, than the pattern calls for. Um, and a, another guess I have is probably it's because I am too nervous, so I knit my stitches a bit too loose or too tight um, because it's my first time knitting the half fisherman rib. I'm not sure, but it just blew my mind. Um, so if you have any guess or you know what might happen, please comment down below. I seriously need some help here. Um, I just really want to have a cardigan that fits me um, and the first time I pick up this yarn I thought it's the great yarn for the Seedless cardigan. So the Seedless cardigan is my first saved cardigan pattern on Ravelry. Um, I just really like the fluffiness of the cardigan um, and now I just want to have a cardigan without more hair. Um, and this yarn is really a good yarn for that. It's really pretty. Um, there are some warm tone in it and I just feel like it's a great fit for the cardigan. But if the half fisherman rib is really giving me some hard time, I might have to give it up. I don't really want to though. Um, yeah, so if you have any suggestions or guess, or just encouragement, <laughs> please leave some comments down below. I really love reading your comments. Yeah, um, and that's um, all of my work in progress. All right, going to the acquisitions. Um, the sun is getting down and uh, I, my home's light is a bit warm at home. Um, but I just checked my camera, it's picking the colors almost right. So please forgive me if um, the colors looks weird or anything. Um, I will try to improve the lighting qualities. Um, maybe for the editing dinghy or the next episode. Uh, but anyways, we are going to acquisitions now. Um, I'm really excited for this part. I wanted to start recording knitting episode, this episode, like two weeks ago because I already <laughs> bought many yarns. Um, but at that time, I don't have any finished objects, so I feel like it was a shame to start a episode without any finished object. Maybe I shouldn't have thought that. But um, anyways, I'm just very excited for my acquisitions. So my first acquisition is um, the Eros Tour collection from Serilla Yarn. Um, they are famous um, Hendai yarn company or team and uh, it was my first time participating in a 
um, hand dye collection that you have to go through the pre-sale. So I purchased, I placed the order um, in June. I placed the order um, in June 15th, I think. And I received the order um, sometime in middle of the September. So it took a really long time um, to receive the yarn. But it really worth the wait, you know? Um, I thought I was not a hand dye yarn person before because I don't like too many things going on um, on the yarn or on my garment. I prefer something very simple. Um, but firstly, I am a Swifty. I uh, enjoy Taylor Swift's song growing up. Um, and I've, I went to the Eros Tour concert as well. I enjoy it so much. So, so much. <laughs> and um, I, when I saw their um, ads on Instagram, I just couldn't help. I have to purchase the yarn. Um, so anyways, um, I will just show you the yarn. They are still in the plastic package. And sorry for the wrinkling, but I, will... I really bought a lot of this yarn. Um, this is the uh, Enchanted colorway. Um, it's their classic sock, um, classic sock line. It's a 100% super wash merino wool to apply. And it has 100 gram, gives you 400 yards. So it's a fingering weight. Oh, really hope the camera is picking up the color correctly. If not, I will insert some B-roll or pictures uh, by the side so you can really see it. Um, I first know this collection by saw the ads on Instagram of this exact yarn, um, Enchanted. So Enchanted was one of my favorite songs from Taylor Swift. Um, and uh, I just really like this purple, you know, there are very slight uh, variations of the purple tone um, in the yarn and it's just mysterious a little bit and also um, a very warm tone. Um, there are purple and I see slight hint of orange here and there are some blue somewhere. Oh, oh a little bit here. And uh, it's just really lovely. I'm so happy just looking at the yarn, you know? Um, and I think it, they create a like really beautiful hand dye yarns and that color just suits the song or suits the vibe really well. And this is definitely one of them. Oh, I like this yarn so much. Um, I have four skeins of this uh, classic sock or the 100% merino. Um, I was thinking about knitting a cardigan or a sweater, maybe a cardigan. I, I really like wearing cardigans. And I even seriously consider about changing my channel name into Enchanted Cardigan because of the color. And I'm just excited thinking about knitting a cardigan in this color. So I also got um, so I also got some pairing mohair with it. Um, it's, everything is in the plastic. I'm just saving it for you guys, but I just realized it will make a lot of noise when opening up the package. And there are a lot of crinkle of the plastic. Sorry about that. So this is the mohair. Um, so this is the kid silk milk here and it has uh, each skin is 50 grams and it gave you 459 yards. Um, so this is how the merino wool plus the uh, mohair look like together. I, I would say they definitely pick up the dyes a little bit different. Oh. The lighting is not great. I can't even see it myself. Um, but the silk mohair is also really pretty. I, I would say the silk mohair 
um, looks great even on its own. So I purchased the yarn thinking maybe I can pair it with the um, mohair because they're the same way. They will just go naturally together. But I, always, I, but I also thought it would be um, a waste if I have only one garment using the enchanted colorway. I, I want everything in my closet to be enchanted. <laughs> but um, I will also probably think about um, using this mohair with some very light purple or light, um, light merino wool or just use it on its own. I know there are some very lovely uh, short sleeve or t-shirt patterns only using merino. Um, I can't think of any names right now, um, but I will insert some pictures or pattern names um, around, around me. Um, and uh, yeah, there's just a lot of possibilities with this yarn. And for the merino, I will probably pair it with other mohairs or just use it on its own. Um, yeah, I'm just very happy just looking at the yarns. Um, yeah, and there's more. I also bought a sock set um, from the collection. Uh, the name, I think this neon pink is shake it off and this very um, party like colorway is karma yeah it's karma um, so i actually placed the order wrong this is not the sock set i want um, i think i was going to place the order for a sock set that's more blue tone and um, i would not go for the uh, the yarn that's so busy but after receiving it, I think I'm also liking it and also like this combination. And uh, um, the neon pink is something I don't have in my wardrobe. It would be super fun to uh, work, work this up. And uh, I'm not sure if it will look great as a sock and uh, how it will pair with my black and white wardrobe. <laughs> Maybe it will be really fun. Um, so I'm really liking it. Um, yeah. And I will also show you another set from this collection. Um, I'm not sure if I can show it to you like this. I will try not to make too much crinkling noise from the plastic bag. But this is the mini skates, the mini sock set uh, from this collection. So from your left to right the colorways are uh, reputation ivy should have said no um, this is folklore uh, the purple is speak now and the dark blue is midnight um, and then the light blue is welcome to new york and the neon pink again is uh, shake it off and there's a white in the middle. The white is cardigan and this peachy is the man. Um, this light yellow is fearless and this is gold rush and this is red. Oh, there is there is no way I can remember all of these colorway names if they are not Taylor Swift's songs. <laughs> and, and again, I feel like they um, cereal yarn make really good um, really just they dye yarn very professionally and they pick out the colors to suit the vibe of the song really well um, I especially like the red colorway in the mini skins because um, I watch all of their stories at the time of their uh, when they are launching um, this collection and they said that um, Taylor Swift uh, depict love as different kinds of red and they just pick different kind of reds and put them into the yarn and there are definitely um, some depth in the color and that's why it makes Taylor Swift songs so um, connecting to us um, and also make the yarn so so beautiful so I, I'm really happy um, I, I was able to um, 
purchase all these yarns as a Swifty and, and as a knitter. And, uh, and actually for the uh, mini sock set, I was thinking I would probably just hand them in the wall or frame it as a Eros tool collection um, souvenir. Um, but I recently I do want to knit more socks, especially color work socks. I was looking at um, the designs by Stone Knit um, and I just fell in love with all her designs. And now I have all these beautiful colors. I will, I will be able to pick up some color work socks um, and uh, knit them up. Yeah. So that's that. And uh, talking about Stone Knit, I definitely purchased her book, The Charming Color Work Socks. Um, from the Atelier Chucky, which is my, one of my favorite local yarn store, but it's not local to me at all. Um, Chucky is near Lake Tahu, um, and our almost every time I go to Tahu ski or do everything else, I will stop at Chucky and go to the yarn store if time allows. And this time I pick up this book um, and. Uh, it just looks really pretty. It has um, 24 patterns um, <clears throat> and I will definitely pick up some to knit. I am thinking to knit um, the sock with some mushrooms or some autumn leaves because that's the autumn vibe that I'm getting right now. Um, I know right now uh, Stone Knit has a pattern in testing uh, and it has some mushroom motifs. So I will probably wait for that pattern to come out and knit that really lovely mushroom sock. So um, that's the book I pick up. And uh, in Atelier Truckee, I also pick up some yarns. These are the yarns that I got. They are from Woolstock. And it's the Blue Sky Fibers line. Um, and uh, it's a worsted weight. Um, dark blue has uh, the color called October Sky, and uh, the light blue called Thermal Spring, and the white called is called uh, Highland Fleece. So these three are the colors that I pick up. So I pick up these three colors. These three are all worsted, 100% wool, and I was using them to knit a hat for my sister. Um, I have a sister who is 16 years younger than me, <laughs> and uh, right now she is in China. I haven't seen her for a year before she was living with me here. Um, and uh, along with my parents. But uh, this year she went back to China because my parents want her to learn the language and learn the culture. So she will still remember, um, she will still have some childhood memory of China. And uh, I think that's really important for her growing up. Um, and anyways, I will knit her a hat. And I am thinking the Babel hat. It's a Fair Island design um, with um, some yarns motif. Uh, no, with some sheeps. So it's a Fair Island hat with some sheeps motif around the hat. It's a really lovely pattern and really cute. Um, the pattern I think only has sizes for adults, but I do find there's a blog um, giving you the stitch pattern um, no, giving you the stitch count for modifying the pattern into a child size. Um, so I will probably do that. And the reason I pick up this uh, sheep type of uh, hat is because my sister's uh, animal zodiac is sheep. Um, so she's always the little sheep at home. So I think it would be really cute if she gets this hat. And I hope that she's not watching this, <laughs> maybe you should say that in advance that Mia, if you are watching it, you should skip it. But um, I hope she will like it. Um, yeah, so that's the plan for these worsted yarns. Um, yeah, and I also pick up some 
some notions from um, that store. These are some uh, white pine, uh, some wooden buttons I pick up. I will probably put them on the season's cardigan. You can tell how much I love that cardigan. I pick up these buttons even before I cast it on the cardigan. I just um, think it will be a really great pair because of the brown tone. Um, and I really want that cardigan. I really want to have a nice cardigan that I can wear. Yeah, so this is these are some buttons that I pick up for the cardigan. And I also got a fancy wooden case for the tapestry needles. Um, I actually, I didn't want to spend the money on this is on the like fancy wooden case. Sorry for the noise. Um, it's just because I was using some plastic cases for my tapestry needle and they broke um, on the fly to Canada. And then the tapestry needles are like growing, going every, everywhere in my bag. And it's just a little bit dangerous, right? So I pick up this uh, wooden case. Hopefully it will last a little bit longer. Um, yeah, that's all. And uh, the last acquisition, I admit that I do probably purchase too much yarn this month. Um, but anyways, there are, they all have plans though, or they all have purpose. Um, that's the justification I have for myself. So um, the last acquisition I have is uh, this yarn. This is the Fritis Gar by Senes Gar. It's a 100% wool. Um, is it worsted weight again? Maybe, yeah. Um, I pick up this, uh, how many skeins? Maybe eight or nine skeins of this wool uh, from Nordic Nest. It's a, uh, it's a yarn shop in San Carlos. It's also not close to me, but there is no um, nice yarn shop, local yarn shop near where I live. So um, the air conditioner is just up. <laughs> anyway, but um, my boyfriend is nice enough to drive me to anywhere that I want to purchase yarn. I went to Nordic Next because um, I, because I saw on Instagram that they are having a sale. Um, for two days um, and they carry a lot of the Stennis Garn yarns um, and th I think they are the only shop in Northern California or the Bay Area that have Stennis Garn um, and uh, I really want to get the yarn because I was so inspired by um, the Instagram post by Stennis Garn that they are going to have um, their like new collection of patterns are all color work sweaters. Um, and I'm really liking everyone, like every of those uh, sweaters designs. And there's one especially I want to make is the Ting Day lady sweater. I will insert the picture here or here. So in the uh, model's picture, um, she's wearing a white sweater with some red motifs around. Um, and uh, I firstly, I don't want to make the exact same sweater as the models wearing. It's kind of boring, right? <laughs> uh, no, it's kind of boring for me because um, red is not a color for me. And I definitely want to wear something that has a blue motif to it. Uh, but there is no blue yarn, uh, at least not. Um, blue yarns that I like in the store. So I will still need to purchase or find out um, two other blue yarns um, in this as well. I think the pattern calls for, like the pattern uses one dark red and the other red is a very bright red. So I will probably do the same color tone for the blue. I will probably search for a, <clears throat> really bright blue tone um, for the yarn. Yeah, so that's the plan for, uh, for this yarn. But I do see myself to uh, cast on more gift knit 
um, next month because I'm trying to knit more stuff for my family when I go to China. So that's the main plan for my autumn. But I do wish I can finish my uh, season's, cat season's cardigan and also the Friday tea before I went back to China. And I will be able to wear it for a few days here in California. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for this episode. I hope you enjoy it. I had so much fun <laughs> recording it because um, it's really a lot of things going on in my life and uh, knitting and purchasing yarns is one of the most joyful thing right now for me. Um, and I hope you will enjoy whatever you are working on. Please uh, leave a comment down below of what you are working on while watching this episode um, or anything like crocheting or any kind of craft that you are working on. Um, I really get some, like a lot of inspirations from your comment. Yeah, um, hopefully you are also having fun and uh, wish you are enjoying the autumn vibes and uh, yeah, and I hope you you all stay well and I will see you in next month. Bye. <laughs>